Hey, Robert. So the other day um, we were having a discussion about, you know, me feeling like alpha females actually need to date alpha men. And here is my thing. So when alpha females date men, men end up being, well, not being, they feel emasculated because as an alpha female, we don't really look to men for money. We don't look for to men to protect us. We don't look for men to pro provide for us. We just look at men as companions and we're pretty much willing to carry 50% of the load, 100% of the load, 200% of the load. Like we really don't care. Our mindset is that we just need to get things done. And if you're with us, like if you can't afford the financial upkeep, like we really don't mind um, just paying for things in hopes that that will give a man time to get his things together. But every time a woman tells me she's done that, she comes to me heartbroken and, you know, devastated because the man ended up leaving her for a needy woman who he had to provide for. So, but you were telling me you, you had a completely different perspective that I wanted to, you know, I wanted the audience to hear about, you know, alpha females, not necessarily needing an alpha male, because I feel like they need an alpha male so that the man that's with them can afford to pay the bills and not feel emasculated. And at the same time, he won't try to compete with her. And he actually will like, you know, have some appreciation for her level of aggression and getting out into the world, getting money and getting the things she wants. So what is your perspective on alpha females um, dating alpha men? Okay. Um, well, it's, actually, it's, it's real deep, so we're going to go deep today. So I think alpha females in general, and there, there's more and more and more. Like, there's, I think if there's a larger population than now than there probably is, like, at, at any other time in history, which is a great thing, right? So all the right. listeners, I want you guys to understand that I actually applaud the alpha, alpha female. I love to see women out here doing their thing, naked industries have to being independent, like, I think that it's necessary, you know, for everything that uh, that's going on in the world, especially our culture. So what I believe that the mistake is sometimes is that, you know, just like um, from your from your perspective, you think that you, it was, if you think about it, you just say, okay, if I have a boss lady, if she dates a boss guy, everything is going to be okay. So, you know, one thing that I actually, I learned and I, I saw, um, a nice uh, documentary on is how they actually choose um, people for reality shows. So they let them go through and they do their pilots and they do all this stuff. And then they actually have like a psychologist and some other people who can tell, like the pilot can psychoanalyze people. Mm -hmm. and they literally know, they look at, they look at the interviews and they say, yo, we definitely got to put this couple on there because we know they're going to be dysfunctional. We know this and we know that. So when you start looking at everything like a psychoanalyst, Analyst, analyst standpoint, I truly believe that um, I don't think for the most part, and it, this isn't cut and dry, right? Because obviously you see two boss people like Jay-Z and Beyonce and then other couples that are like that, that, that actually work, which I believe are kind of far in between. But I believe that alpha females and alpha males, for the most part, I think that it's a bad combination because you have too strong because when you go into break, break down to me what you, what you feel when you say alpha what does alpha mean to you so alpha to me is a man who he directs and he provides um uh -huh. beta men are like the men who not to say they're bitches but they're kind of like bitches to us because they need you to tell them to do everything. They always want you doing something for them, for their emotions and to make them feel good. And they don't really allow a woman to feel like a woman, a princess. 
and to be right. feminine and to be in her core because beta men like they want a woman chasing them right and it's just like pushing women into masculine energy right okay so and then so give me then give me a perspective on alpha in reference to uh, a female so uh the the alpha female is the female who she kind of operates in her masculine a lot because she has learned to um, take care of her own needs. And inside of her, from birth, she's just a go-getter. And she's called to um, empower other women and change the dynamic of, you know, mostly her generation. And she's just called to be a boss chick. And she's naturally that way. But men don't necessarily want a woman who doesn't need them for anything. And an alpha, a alpha female's problem is she's figured out how to do everything on her own. So basically, when she gets a man, she really doesn't need him anything for other than sex. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So you. So I think you actually did. You hit everything right on the head. So my my standpoint on it is that it is it's a good idea in theory, right? Mm -hmm. um, But I think when it comes to the execution part, it looks good. It looks good on paper, obviously. Then when everybody's telling, oh, my girl, she she owns her own business. She does this, she does that. And then she's like, oh, my man, he's the CEO, da, 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 Everything sounds great until it comes to the point somebody, at some point, somebody, not only has to understand the roles, which is the roles is what keeps everything flowing, right? So I don't want, right. and I know women are going to hear this, and they're going to be like, oh, no, we're not going on this role stuff. No, 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 let me just, right? So the role is basically the same. At some point, who is going to be in control of something, and then who is going to be the person that allows one allows one person to take the lead on something, and then one person to take the back seat on something, right? Right. Now, you were, you actually heard my standpoint when I told you, and it put it in perspective. I, I when I read a great book, and I promise you, by the next time we'll talk, I remember that this was years ago, and it really helped me understand that in life, just like you said, you you have the dominant, and then you also you have the feminine, just like you said. You have what was the word you said? You got the um, the beta. Yeah, you got the beta. You said you got the dominant. You got the thing. this book actually broke down that how the man is not always the alpha. Sometimes the man is actually the beta and then he actually attracts a dominant female because that woman or that 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 person is comfortable in their dominancy of how they are in life, right? And like I said, there's nothing wrong with that. Not when society, when you actually break and another thing, I think the whole problem is the way the society looks at everything. And another thing, I think people pay way too much attention to what society, what everybody else thinks, right? There's True. some people, like, if you can be in a situation that is, oh, it works out perfect for you and it works out perfect for her, but then let's say, you know, you got one of your homegirls is a straight boss. She makes half a million, million dollars a year running her. She's killing it, right? She's doing her thing. Her dude might make a hundred, might make a hundred and twenty, right? He's doing, right. doing his thing by his standards, but he's definitely on a lower level than her. But she loves him. They get along. And, you know, when it comes down to the they do a lot of baller stuff that doesn't allow, you know, him to step up to that place. She's buying the plane ticket. Sometimes she's booking the resort, whatever it is. If you get into a mutual conversation around a group of girlfriends, what do you think your girlfriends are going to say to this woman when she's around the table? Because I guarantee you, she's proud of what she does. She's like, yo, me and my man, blah, blah, blah. and she's probably, she probably doesn't even come off to say that she's the one that pays for everything. But let's just say it comes up in a thing. Everybody else would be at that table and be like, girl, what? They say, wait, you bought the plane tickets. You did this. You're like, yeah, you know, because... You know, he has, he, has, he has a really, really good job, but obviously I make more money than him in what I do. Now, he does he does well for himself, but I do much better. And then I want, there's certain things that I want to do. Therefore, I can go ahead and I just buy, I buy the ticket. How do you think that conversation is going to go? If, if, if you're at a table, a nice restaurant, y'all having girls night out, six of y'all, how do you think your girl is going to leave that table feeling after having a conversation with everybody? Right, they're going to 
make her feel like she's low or she's getting pimped out or that someone's mm-hmm. getting over on her or they'll tell right. her that's not going to work out for you. He's going to cheat on you. He's going to leave you yeah. like you're being the man in the situation. Right now. Okay. Now, so, so that, that, that's how that's going to go. Right. So therefore it'll start making it, the things start making it uncomfortable. She brings him around and then, you know, maybe they start look, you know, you can kind of feel a little bit of a difference. Right. Right. So, from the standpoint where I now personally, as a man, that, you know, I consider to be, they were, I'm doing my thing, holding it down, I've never had a female take care of me. It, it's just not my thing. But by nature, I'm not the typical dominant. Like, I'm, I am totally different. I am, I am a dominant, but I'm a dominant that takes a backseat. Right? Like, so when we, we, when we have wow. to go to places, well, yeah, and you probably never heard this before, but, but I'm the same way in my business. Right. So I run my business, but I have people that are in front that people know they know them more than they actually know me. But all the checks get cut to me. Right. So when we, when I deal with like appointments or closings or stuff like that and videos are being done, I'm nowhere in the picture, but I'm the man. And it's OK for me because I know that I'm running the show and I know that I'm cutting everybody else's checks. So it doesn't bother me to take a step back. Like if we, if we go out to dinner. Uh, let's say that she she we go out to dinner and then she she has she has uh, my my American Express. Boom, hey, I'm gonna just about to run to the bathroom. You know, pay for the check. It doesn't bother me why because I'm paying the bill. I know I'm the source of everything that's happening, so I don't need. To, I'm, I'm, I'm I just say that I'm not the type of person that I have to be recognized. I gotta put my checks on as long as I know that when I go to sleep that night, that yo, I'm handling my bills. I'm fine with it. it. Don't bother me. But I know that that's not the case with it. That's not the case with a lot of men. But, and another thing is, I kind of, any man that's in a situation, like, you, like, like we're talking about, I would have, I have strong advice for you to say, man, you got to make sure that this is something that you're ready for, and then on top, I don't, I personally, I don't necessarily advise it, but I don't advise against it, because I, I know psychologically what happens to these type of relationships. You know, or they, they, they'll get to a certain point, and, you know, the woman's just going to be like, yo, why are you not stepping your game up? Because I'm doing my thing on a higher level. So, I, I mean, <laughs> personally, I feel, I, I feel like if they, if they, it would cause more problems than it would actually, than it would actually be beneficial and be happy, right? Now, right. I've seen cases where it's, just, it's totally different. Now, I told you about my friend, but I tell you about the, the and how it always breaks down to her. So, I personally say that it really just, in my opinion, from my standpoint, it just really all comes down to communication. But when you, when I, when we, when you, I saw that post, you know, I did, I, I was like, you know, I was like, what you guys, the content of everything you said was great. But I said, it doesn't always work that way. So we, if you go back to a dominant and a dominant, I gave you the example about how the re- main reason why a battery has to have two different currents. It has to have its positive and mm-hmm. it has to have its negative, right? And if you, I, I, you know, I've changed batteries plenty of times or if you try to put a charge on it, if you put that negative on that negative, that should, it sparks, flames start to pop, 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 pop. Because the, inner, because the way the energy is going is one has to go one way and one has to go the other. And that's what allows the battery to power everything. So I think that the, 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 um, the, I think the dominant and the dominant can work together in certain aspects. But I think on a long term thing, if some, if, if you have two dominants, but then somebody doesn't learn how to take the back seat, the problem that'll come in is going to be infidelity. Right, that I guarantee you, infidelity is going to be the first thing that happens, right. and, it's going to, and it's the most likely is going to be is most likely is going to be the guy, right? And the guy is going to cheat with some raggy chick that works at the office because she <laughs> makes him serious, right? This, right. I mean, like you know, something you just got to keep it real, and it'll happen like that because she's a boss and she doesn't have the time to do certain things like, like hey, baby, you look handsome there. I see you've been working out, da da da. This and this and that. Oh, cause you know, got business to run, and that normally happens. But you got that, you know, little chick that's at the office every day talking about, "Hey, Chris, I see you. You got your new shoes on. You know, got that on." And then for you know, hey, you know, she's working late. Hey, let's go grab a drink. And then it goes from, "Hey, let's have a drink." To, uh, you know, let's exchange information. Or we start talking about Facebook. And I think, I think it's just a recipe for 
disaster eventually down the line. Just obviously, like you see on everything that we that uh, we've seen, like these stupid reality shows and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. Always the dudes who are with boss chicks, they end up cheating with some chick that's just gorgeous. But if you even go back and step off of reality TV and you just look at the uh, the traditional business name, right? The traditional right. business name generally always goes after or ends up stepping out with somebody that is on that submissive level because that submissive level fulfills a need that's inside of a man, whether he, whether he's dominant or whether he's submissive. That, that um, you know, I mean, Bishop Palmer, he said it the best, and he said that, it, I believe I sent you that thing, the, uh, that sermon, it was it's titled Strong the Wise, right? Right, yeah, I do. A that long, was a really a long, good one. A long time ago, and he basically breaks down how no matter what position that you're in, that everybody is, that being strength or dominant is actually a disadvantage over being wise, because wise people understand that there's a time to be strong and then there's a time for me to be weak, right? And so, right. and when you did that, and I was like, no, I, I don't even want to say the word weak, but there's 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 a time where you know for a fact that you need to say, no, babe, I can't open this jar. Like, it, it's just, I'm trying, trying. You know damn well you can open it, but you just know that that's what makes him walk around the house and be like, man, I open the triple jar for my baby. That's no, I really can't open it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, so I, be, I believe it's, little, it's, it's things like that that will get lost in translation because, like, I, I, I think it's, I think it's, I want to say the, um, I'm working on, you know, where the, I think it's a huge, you know, disadvantage or setback for a dominant woman to tone herself down in certain aspects because obviously she has something that she needs to, to, um, to get to the world. Like, so she, it's meant for her to be out there, like. You know, like Oprah, like Oprah's on her dominant. She's a boss. Like she, it would be terrible for her to be like, "Yo, I'm cook dinner for my man." You know, regardless of whatever people think she does. But it's just like it. But her calling, being like, "Hey, I got a chef at the crib." And she but wait, but different. wait. Yeah. I told people that before, right? But then Oprah came on, and she posted a video where she was cooking black eyed peas for Stepman, right? And she's like, yeah, sometimes, you know, you got to cook some black eyed peas in the cornbread. You know, he be ready, right? Like, I was like, oh, okay, oh. So, so, that, so that, that's, 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 where, that's where the wisdom comes in because mm-hmm. she said, even though that I've done something that, that you, that you didn't do, you know, that, or that I, you know, I've done something economic, but it doesn't, it's not taking away from her femininity. And I think that's also something mm-hmm. that a, a dominant or strong woman has to be okay with be like, you can be a boss, but don't lose your femininity because your femininity is the reason why a man wants you, right? Your femininity is the reason why the man wants to watch you, you know, be like, I know like my favorite thing is to take my girl out on dates. And when she puts on that dress with those heels, I can't I can't take my eyes off of the tab and the bottom part of the butt that's underneath the skirt or the uh, or the jeans like that. There's certain <laughs> things about a woman that that drives us men crazy. Right. And men do want their woman to be their woman, and that that's that's just the thing. That's just the thing about it. And it's like, you know, you have to take you have to take. I think I don't want to say personality, but let's take professionalism. Out of out of the household, or how much money? Like, take all of that out of it and start looking at who are you supposed to be for the person that you're saying that you want. And I think we get so caught up in who we are and what we're doing. Stop, now, lady. Listen, one thing I'm not telling you is just go get a dude and be this. No, you got to qualify these clowns, right? Let's get this straight. You got to qualify these clowns. So what happens is y'all 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 are taking my advice, but y'all doing it for the dude. That, that you met at JJ's Chicken Shack. That's not the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> okay, so why is the guy at JJ's Chicken Shack not good enough? What is the real true problem with him? Okay, so that, 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 I'm, that, I'm, I just, we always use, I use a lot, y'all, y'all, y'all are going to hear this more. I use a lot of references that will just directly make you think of some bullshit, right? Like, no, I, I love JJ's and, you know, my shacks and shit like that. That's our spot. But I will say that you, you, you said what makes these men not good enough or 
Now, right, like, why don't they appreciate when this boss comes along and it's like hitting a lottery, but they have no appreciation for her? Uh, that is, wow, that's a, gee, I'm going to tell you for that. Well, I would was, I was say it just like this. A person who, and damn, man, this, this, is, this is even, it, it even going to sound bad saying this, but if you're saying, like, quality is not always respected by somebody who doesn't understand quality, right? And saying that, then Amen. I'm going to have all my listeners, I'm going to have all my listeners that they're going to be listening, they're going to say, oh, so you're saying because I, you got such and such, I don't know quality. No, I'm not saying that. I, may, I, just, I shouldn't even use that as an example, but I don't think a, a, a hardworking man will appreciate a hardworking woman to a to over miles than a dude that don't really work or don't have no goals, dreams, and aspirations, right? Right. But if we, for some reason, I see boss women that always go towards that opposed to the other person who's actually working, goals, dreams, aspirations. Now, but here's the, here's the thing. The mentality of these men are different. Right, so men like me, my mentality is different. I actually don't have I actually don't have a lot of time or even desire. I'm only I'm only thirty five now, but I don't have a lot of time and desire to do the things that I used to do. The moment that I started getting, oh, I'm talking about laser focusing on life and getting business done and getting ready for retirement, all this stuff. Like I live like this. The past two weeks has all been. I got on a new workout routine. I'm at the gym at five thirty every morning. So therefore, I ain't going out during the week. Because not, I ain't waking up at five thirty. It's not gonna happen. Then I know I gotta train my. I gotta train my new employees that are coming in on the phone. You gotta get all this stuff taken care of, and then I gotta be ready for the next day, prepping meals and all sorts of stuff. So it's it's certain things like it's just you're at the point where. We not out there like that, right? And then if you and then if you get with a guy like that, it's kind of like you starting to understand, like, yo, okay, this person is focused, so mm-hmm. it ain't like, oh, they can we do this? But those other guys that you come they, that you come across, they got time. They have nothing but time. <laughs> they got plenty of time. Hey, hey, they, they, they got time, and I one of my, I, you know, I listen to a uh, urban comedian all day long. That's not if I'm not listening to some business like I'm listening to that just to keep my spirit up. And then one of the comedians said, he said there's something about these dudes, he's like, you got these dudes sling dick like nobody's business because they ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. And they don't think to make money with their free time. They think like, oh my yeah. God, what chick can I have sex with? Yeah, so I think that's what happens. So it, it's, it's a variety. It's a variety of reasons why they go that way, and then also, you know, I look at the the the, um, the characteristics of like of like these guys when you break it down. You know, obviously, you see, like you said, you see it on TV. You see, you see the Grammy Award women, winning singer, who's sweet, educated, da da. da. She ends up with the street dude. Street now they got paper, but the mentality is different. You rarely see them with business people. Or you rarely see them with, you know, traditional guys that are educated CEO. You don't see that very often. What happens is that you see, and if we, you know, we're frankly, you know, a lot of stuff that we talk about, we talk about our mm-hmm. culture, which I think is what we should address, is that you see those men that have taken this path and say, yo, man, I don't be doing it like this, not no more, da, 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 I'm focused on this. They end up dating outside the race. Right. Oh my gosh. I literally told somebody that this morning I was like the kind of smart business, like geeky black man. I'm like, I kind of see now how they end up with a woman outside the race because they can't seem to find the black women on their, that frequency. And that's what I'm thinking. Like, it's the black women on the frequency and the black men on the frequency. Like, they cannot find one another. And that's why, you know, I do what I do. I just want high frequency people to be able to find each other. And for me, I think that dynamic of those two types, when they come together, that it will work well because uh, alpha female, like, she really still wants to be princess. She wants to be, you know, feminine and playful and soft, right? But it's like if she's with a man who is not making that much money, right? And then he also 
doesn't appreciate her because he's feeling emasculated she gets to the point where it's like she's talking crazy to him because it's like dude i don't need you for anything right like my balls are bigger than yours so right, okay. <laughs> that's why okay. i think the alphas so, go together yeah so okay yeah so with that said so i want to go back to right basically what you just said i always i always said that um i remember i had a girlfriend that i was talking to one time no that was that was big and um she actually had said that to me one time. Like we was talking, and I and I made more I made more money than she did. But she was she was for she was independent, mm-hmm. and but she had been on that for so long that you know she was she was like you know I don't understand what you want me to be. She said I can't I don't want to be the damsel in distress. She was like you know I work myself and I do this and I do that. She said basically said she she was like I don't need you for those things. So then, so then, when you when you get into that attitude, now you just you just you just get, you just relieve the man of his only position in your life. Right. And men men have to and want to be needed, and so do women. Right. So right. the you know, so if you get to a point where you're not opening the door for your lady, you're not paying the check, you're not doing the stuff, you're not trying to she was big. She doesn't feel like a woman. That's why, you know, the re- regular women that are marriages, that's why they let themselves go because the men stop. They they take that one thing that they had away from them, and that was that. Yo, I'm I'm the lady here. I'm I'm who I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed. To, I'm the person that makes your eye glimmer. You know, what I'm mm-hmm. saying? like your attention used to be on, and that's what happens. And that's why I think I think that's one of the only reason why women in relationships let themselves go. I don't think people just randomly let themselves go. Like, like, yo, if, if I'm with somebody and she's putting on weight and better, I'm like, yo, man, I'll like, yo, let me go to the gym. And, but I'm just that type of partner because I'm like, yo, we're supposed to look good for each other. I was talking to um, when uh, my client that uh, that I told you that I, I sat down with and I started consulting for her over a year ago. Mm-hmm. And when we were leaving the table, you know, we were doing our kind of year follow-up. And I told her, I said, I, said, I still feel like that women take some of the things that I say for granted. I was like, yo, like when I said, and I told, I told her, and I, I'm probably my analogies are they're kind of ratchet sometimes, but they just make sense. And I, I said, yo, I said, if you really want to be this type of woman, I said, you got to start harnessing your inner hope. And she was just like, what the hell did that mean? Yeah. I said, yo, let me. I said, I said, let me explain something to you. I said, why do you think men always cheat? And y'all always call them, we they cheat with who? They cheat with hoes. Right, that 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 we on the same page. Exactly, because right? men like yeah, hoes. There you go. We love hoes, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So so there's so we so we love hoes because hoes are uh, it, it's it's even bad sounding like this, but when I'm finished, it doesn't make sense. But hoes have that attitude where hoes they just they hoes they want to look they their job the only thing they have going for them is that they want to look sexy and they know that they. are they only going to survive by making men feel good, right? They know that's their job. So why is it that sometimes women feel like, yo, I, I think your girlfriend, I think your wife, I think she's the same thing and that you know. Not in the sense like you're thinking, but when I said, like, every time I said, you got to be ready to go off for dinner, I said, you need to make it a point to be on your fucking game. So when you get ready, you don't need, don't get dressed for you. You get dressed for him because you already know what he likes. So when you put on the outfit and you come out the bathroom, don't even let him see you. When you come out the bathroom, you need to be like, damn, baby, like, what's going on? That's, that's <laughs> for him, right? right. That's, for you to, that's for you to make sure. You say, I don't care what woman walk by. His eyes on my ass all night long. See, we get in relationships and we get in marriages, and then what happens is it's almost like that I got it syndrome and you know, but, but that's so I'm, I'm, boring if you like don't keep the love going because that's yeah, where but, all but the fun is. But it's, it's the it's the excitement, right? So right. You, you so that I said when I was telling her, and she was even confused by what I was saying. I was like, "Damn, I haven't done that good of a job." And I said, "Yo, I was like, if you're seriously saying that you want somebody, I was like, I want you to start embracing these principles that I'm telling you right now." So. When you get ready to start going out, like, yo, every time you guys go out, you're like, boom, boom, boom. He's like, hey, what, you, God, you look great. You look this. You look, that's what it's for. And I said, on top of that, you also need to acquire the same thing from him. You guys say, listen, man, I, lo- I love when you wear your blazers with an undershirt on this and this and that. This is how I want you to look at as a man. And matter of fact, you dressing, you dressing before you go, I said, man, I want you to put this outfit on tonight. 
most dudes won't buck at that. I I had a great relationship with a woman who she 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 had an amazing fashion sense, and I was like, yo, order my stuff. Here's my credit card, right? Right. So, these, but then you, you today is a little different. You know, guys are they they stepping up with this style and this new. You know, I'm I'm feeling everything that's going on, but I think there's 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 so many compounds that go into not only attracting the person, but the real work is where it comes into keeping it. And I think that's what, that's where everybody falls short. Right? I think getting into the situation is easy, but keeping and maintaining it is where all the everything falls short. And then that's where all this who's gonna do what, whose role is what, you know, what's gonna what's gonna continue to make the lady, you know, look at you as a man, what's gonna make this dude not want to step out on you. You know, all these it comes with all these different factors, but I think if you go then you go into it with just to say, hey, you know, just this and this, that that's why I feel I really feel like a lot of it falls apart. Mm. That is really, really interesting. But I think it falls apart because a lot of women they generally just don't do that period. They don't, because that's something a woman should do for herself. So okay. about time a man comes along and she has a man, it's just naturally a part of her routine. Like when I get dressed, a man is always going to end up saying, damn, right? It's just what I naturally do because as a woman yeah you should want to be sexy and look sexy and you know you emanate the sexiness and that's really what sex appeal is it's just a inner it's an inner thing but yeah. so when a woman is she's with the beta man and it's like she's sexy right she's beautiful she's sexy and she's everything like a lot of times that's when he gets to feeling like oh man, this is too good to be true. Like she's going to dump me or I'm going to lose her. So then they start self-sabotaging. And another thing is, even though an alpha female um, will take care of everything, like I hear when a lot of clients come to me, they literally say, I mean, some of these women, Robert, they are literally married, right? And, you know, some of them, you know, they on the outside, it looks like they have a happy marriage, but they just say, I am so tired. Like they look up at um, the princess, right? They want to be Meghan Markle, right? They want a man to treat them like a princess. So it's like, even though alpha females are alpha females, it's just mostly by force, not by choice. And I just think an alpha man could come along and since he'll be providing and doing the things that he's supposed to do and he also knows she's not using him like she gets her own money that it allows her to be feminine and then it finally allows her the safety to submit to him and because that's the biggest reason why I know in general black women will not submit to most men because the man doesn't provide and then the man doesn't like the fact that the woman isn't submissive. So like you said, they go get the other girl who's sexy because that's really all she has going for her. And she's instantly submissive because he is the higher authority, right? Most of the time he has money, she doesn't. Or, you know, the hoish women, like you said, they just know like I make men feel good. So there's just so many dynamics and alpha females, they, they, they need an alpha man just to learn how to be feminine to me. That's how I feel. Yeah. I mean, it's, and then we, we also, you're also in a dynamic of, of a generation and an economy that is totally different from when these principles actually came from into into fruition, right? So the principles, mm -hmm. everything we're talking about, everything's in the Bible, right? It's every the right. Bible saying that about how man is supposed to do this and blah blah and all that everything is there, right? But what it did not account for was is this evolution of the world and what the day we live in today, right? Mm -hmm. So I always hear we I hear a lot of uh, you know women else say, Well when I grew up I never seen my mom work, right? My dad did everything, my dad did this, my dad did that, my did my dad did this and blah blah blah. And, I, and, I, and like, listen, I'm 100% I'm okay with that, right? But then right. I kind of I kind of have to hit, I've heard people say things, and even in my industry and in real estate, like, I have to tell people 
that when they give advice on something, I say, I believe what you're saying is economically irresponsible based on the current condition of markets, right? So if you if just give it, if you give all the listeners a quick, if you compare 1970 to now, if you compare it with not only the cost of living, but if you, not, if you, if you compare the salaries to the cost of living, right? Everything is completely all down. I think in the 70s, you used to be able to hold down one job at the factory that could take care of the entire family, the household, the wife didn't have to work, and the kids all went off to college. We don't live in that world anymore. I think the average the average cost of a car back then was about ten thousand dollars, right? The uh, a house you used to you used to be able to buy a house in the city. As matter matter of fact, you back that is when you could buy um, the brownstones in Brooklyn for like ten or fifteen thousand dollars, right? People 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 talk about this stuff, but then they don't actually reference that to knowledge. You know, you can't even get a, a t- you can't get a brownstone in Brooklyn that needs to be completely uh, torn the torn apart and rehab for less than one point two million dollars right now, right? We live in a completely different economical uh, window, and nobody nobody's paying attention to it. But they're still saying, that, "Hey, not only that, but a lot of the industries that were here back in the day, they're completely gone. Mm-hmm. All, every everything back in the day consisted of somebody having to have a job. Now every now we're going we're going into the AI phase, which is going to continue to get worse because regular jobs are being outsourced to factories are already gone. Right there, you know they keep trying to bring some things back in and some things out, but for the most part, at the, uh, at all of our jobs have been sent, most majority of the jobs have been sent overseas. So now, if, if the hustlers, the entrepreneurs, and the people who are bringing in new industries are the ones who are surviving, which leaves an entire group of people, which, you know, when you look at the masses, it's a lot of black men that are that can't find regular work to support jobs. That's why he was working at Walmart. No shit, no shot to anybody working at Walmart, but... If you start noticing when you go in the fast food restaurant back in the day, these were kids' jobs. Now you, you see grown ass people working the drive through or working at McDonald's. Now McDonald's is even out saving jobs and they're using the uh you know, the the order thing. So I'm I went to the McDonald's at the uh the Detroit airport when I was coming home a few months ago. They had like four of those things in the front. They only had three people running the whole restaurant. I remember when I used to work at McDonald's when I was 15. It, you, they had, they had, they, it was, spring break was galore because there was kids working everywhere. You had three people on drive through, four people on the front register, one person de- designated to clean the, uh, the area, somebody outside sleeping. You don't see none of that. So we live in, the, we even live in an economical climate where it's just like a lot of things are not, but people, people don't, people, people, on, people on TV and social media paint one world. And I work in the financial world, right? So I know what's really going on. And these the the statistics don't lie. So Robert, like, let me ask you this. So are you saying that um, people need two incomes in the household these days? Because I see that going around a lot. Okay. Oh, oh, let me, me, let, let, I'm going to answer your question very strongly. The numbers do not lie. Almost eight, I think 80% of the households today have to be two income households. Um, they, I was watching, uh, I was watching, uh, 90 Day Fiance, one of the shows that I just, I just did my, my, it's hilarious to me, right? But, the, mm-hmm. um, there's this, a black kid in LA brought this girl over from Russia and she had no plan on working. His mom said, that what concerns me the most is that she doesn't think that she's going to have to work. And I obviously you know what's going on in California. She said, you have, you households over here are two income households and some are three. Like it's like economic, when you actually break, and this, see, this is what the other conversation that us as black people don't have or just people don't have in general because it seems like that everything is okay. I worked, I was in the financial services industry doing uh doing appointment after appointment after appointment with families that on the outside looked like everything was okay. The kids I tell you that they were two they were literally two paychecks away from bankruptcy, right? Mm-hmm. If, you, if they lost their job and two paychecks was gone, you're going you're getting ready to go into foreclosure. They have no savings, but they live in the suburbs. They both got cars, they both got kids, they had a lot of liabilities and their asset ain't even producing what it's supposed to produce, right? So mm. this, these are all these these are, these are the real problems where I, I heard, you know, a good mentor of mine, and he's like, yo, he's like, my first wife left me, you know, because I wasn't bringing in the money like I was supposed to. 
And, you know, wow. this, this, that. But, so that's one of his things why he hustles so hard right now. And I said, I don't necessarily think that that was a big thing because now it put this, this and this is one of my mentors, it put him in the standpoint where he was like, I got to go a little bit harder. But when you actually look at this, the statistics say that 70%, 75% of households today live paycheck to paycheck, right? They said you have the uh, like eight, eight, nine, or 20 million people running around with no life insurance, right? Mm -hmm. you, have people, you, you literally have the large, largest portion of the population today that are going around that don't have, a, that don't have an additional thousand dollars in the savings account. These are real statistics, right? So right. It's, it's, it's okay for us to sit around and say, oh, you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to. That sounds all great and good. But every time we, we go through a correction in the economy, industries figure out a way to pay people less. And, and one, one thing that you know and everybody else knows in business, you look at a way to cut your costs so that, you can, so that the business can remain more profitable. Right, but right. what is one thing that has not changed? The cost of living keeps going up. A part Atlanta used to be like one of the top, most pop and cheapest places to live. Uh, uh baby, it ain't like that no more. Atlanta is getting expensive. Yeah, very expensive. So, Robert, this is my perspective on yeah. you know the two two income households. You have a lot as a woman. Um, who you know women we take care of several people off of one income and yeah. so in the perspective of a man not being able to take care of his family off of one income that does not make sense to us and in the just say let's just say in the spiritual realm or if a man were to date an alpha female or let's just say a smart female who's really tapped into God. She's tapped into source. Like she's great at manifesting and she's brilliant and she has a business mind. If such a man were to marry her, then all the business ideas are just in her head. Like she has an unlimited supply of business ideas. So therefore she doesn't actually have to work if he actually listens to her and takes her advice. Like, what do you think of that? I think that that is a great idea. I think it's a great concept, but that only works with communication. And the, mm -hmm. and every everything that you're gonna hear me say over time is what I've had to learn. You know, up and you know, like I said, I want I would say seriously dating for you know seven to eight years. And when you get serious about it, it is kind of like okay, what's the one downfall that we just didn't talk about this, or we didn't talk about this until it was too late. Right, so communication is everything. So that that's another thing. Like I was saying, you would have to be that would work in an instance where you had the woman who is the brain, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing in the Bible that God said that I'm not going to pass down the greatest idea in the world that would make a big impact on the world to a woman. There's nothing that said that. Nothing, right? So let's right. say you you have the idea. You and if you have a man, what most people don't understand is that when you have a man, you have a woman, you have a teammate. You, if you guys, you, you guys are the team, right? Somebody, everybody can't dunk the damn ball. Somebody got to get the ball up the court. Somebody's supposed to dunk, it, right? Somebody, a coach, the coach comes over to play. You're a team, so you got to, you got to define your roles. Everybody want to be Jordan, but everybody can't shoot. Right, like, and and in, in most of my, and most of uh, you know, whenever I partner with somebody, or I end up having a partner, my partner or girlfriend is mainly is mainly the organizational person, right? Right. So I'm, I, I, like, I'm, I'm a, a me. The, my, I would say my pro, my type is I'm like the race car, NASCAR. Like, I got the engine. I got. I'm, I'm just going to go. Is, but I need a good pit crew. I need somebody to make sure that my. I got to change my tires. I got to do this. I got to do somebody that's going to keep me going on the road because once, once all that's on there, I'm gone. Like, I'm gone. I'm trying to get the checkered flag. Right? But not not everybody's like that, and that's okay. So I, I think that you I think you have to have deep, deep conversations with partners because, like, you know, I think, I think we, we get into this. I tell you, I'm, I'm going to say this, and I've been, I've been working off of this for the past year, and, and you know, as we've been talking, has been working out great, but even though we're supposed to be working from the heart and you know the feeling, you can't. You got to stop being emotional about everything, mm -hmm. right? If you if you if you if you stop being so emotional about trying to be with a person and be logical about it, you'll make much better decisions. 
like you're like man I, I can man this man has such a good heart and da, da, da. yeah man everybody's got a good heart everybody's got potential but excuse my language but is that motherfucker gonna step up to the plate and do what needs to be done you, <laughs> so if you're a boss you gotta make a boss decision and then that, I'm the same men have to do the same thing like it's cool here she's nice she's sweet da 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 blah blah but bro is, is she gonna be the woman to raise your kid, is she going to be the one to hold you down if something does happen? That's another thing the women have to understand. Whoever is on top, something, life always tests you. Something is always right. going to happen. Not right. to whoever it is, life. So you, you can be you can be the greatest wife in the world and let's say the wife gets breast cancer, which that, it happens all the time today. Is the man that you chose because of the boss that he is, is he going to be the man to be by your bedside and get you the best care that you need and going to be there for you? Or is he going to be like, yo, this ain't what I signed up for? Wow. You know what? That is really, really, really deep, but... Yeah. yeah so you, you, see, you see what I'm saying? When, when you start yeah. getting logical, and mind you, we've been talking the whole time and we, we haven't said nothing about physical features. We ain't been talking about none of that. We ain't been talking about whether they got swag. We ain't talked about what fraternity they was in. And, and this is, these, these are all some of the stupid characteristics that we build a partner off of. Like, I know I know women that only date guys that were in fraternities. I was like, you're, you're fucking really? But like, yeah. Some, some women wow. have stuff like that. Or like some women only date guys with beards. Or some women date a beard. Like, this is the stupidity that's out there. But then you have people, women that women that complain they say oh my god these are yeah because you keep choosing the guys who got all the time in the world to get tattooed it's not a time to get their life together or body or they, they base it off of the aspect they base it off of a characteristic that they have or or that has nothing to do with anything that'll be that 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 goes into longevity like is this person not? and so when you start logically choosing the party your heart follows in my opinion and i'm not i'm not saying go and marry Poindexter because Poindexter ain't for you. Like, Poindexter needs to have his Poindexter, uh, Derisha, whatever you want to call it. But I'm not telling you to go find a guy that, you know, he's shy, but he makes good money, he's got a career, he's focused, he, you know, he's going to be there below. I'm not telling you because you're, you're not, you're not being fair to yourself because that's not necessarily what you want. But you have to, you got to separate fetishes from your necessities. So if you start focusing on the necessities first, and then say, listen, man, this guy has, these are all the qualities, but he's not, he's not the muscular broad guy that I'm normally used to dating. I'm going to let that shit go because that shit don't pay the bills. Right, right, and then, right. And then, and, and, and then encourage, and then encourage him to go to the gym. Don't tell him, be like, oh, well, you know, the guys that I normally, they, they got 15 years. No, just say, hey, baby, let's, let's say, baby, let's go to the gym. You know, stuff like that. Wow. I think I think I think women today, women are the most intelligent creatures on the planet. You, know, <laughs> from a certain standpoint, I think women have they forgotten how valuable they are, and they for they forgotten the power that they actually have. The world moves and shakes because of women, it ain't because of men. Right, Everything but see, world... most men don't realize that, and this is where I come in at because I know men like you, right? And but most men don't think like you. And then you right. like you said, women should be more logical with it. But women don't think logic. Women think emotions and then logic. Like when a man wants to, when a woman wants to be with a man, she her heart connects to him first due to is usually due to him presenting to have his stuff together. Right. Like, because, you know, a lot of men. Um, they show their representative and their representative, you know, pretends to have things together. Right. So they pick him based upon that and the emotional state she gets from him. But see, this is the thing about the gold diggers, right? The gold diggers are logic. It's just pure logic. So I, that's how a lot of men end up with a bad woman and getting their heart broke because the gold digger comes along. She's very logical. So the man is like, oh, wow. Yes, yes. Cool. Gotcha. Right. Okay. He's relieved that the emotions aren't there. Got you. OK, so I'm going to hit you with this. You remember just that I'm bringing the gold digger now, right? Mm -hmm. So um, we talked about that. And then when I talked about it, I said women need to get more in touch with, with their inner hope, right? Mm -hmm. Women, um, the, the quote unquote promiscuous female knows the triggers of the man to get them to do.
do what they want or to be able to get what they want out of him, right? Right. What makes you think that a woman that has a man, a man's heart and she knows him doesn't doesn't have the same capability to do it, but she doesn't do it because she says that he should already know, right? So let's mm-hmm. just, let's just say that a woman, let's say that there's something that she wants, and um, and uh, and she no rather rather than ask that she won't ask, she'll just go do it herself. Rather than getting to bed the night before and say, "Babe, so you know." We got, we, I know we have this event coming up, and I, I just really don't like anything in the closet. But, and the thing is, like, I really want to look extremely, extremely sexy for him. Dude, be like, oh, baby, everything in the closet is okay. You'd be like, no, listen, I'm going to tell you. Say, I'm not going to the event because it's just not going to be that way. And say, babe, I only go out one way, and it's going to be for you, and I got to look amazing, right? And right. then he's going to be like, well, well what you want to do? Let's just let's go to the mall tomorrow. Let's 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 just see if I can find. She already knows what she wants, but now she's taking a couple extra steps. Just and then when he goes and he he keeps going up by, he's gonna get her the outfit and da da da. And then he's gonna be walking around. She she gonna see her taking the pictures and everything. He'll be like, yeah, I do that. No, you didn't, dummy. <laughs> but 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 in, but in reality, that's the way that it's supposed to be. Like yeah, she. But I think women. I'm gonna say this right as a man. Mm-hmm. I think women give men too much credit for wanting them to be smart. Our mind is on certain yes. things, right? Especially yes. when you're talking about a male provider. All I and all I think about is I gotta go. I got we got I got this. I gotta get this. Blah blah. We're going through this and this and this and this. Most of the time, there's times where I'm like, yo, I didn't even realize that I wore that shirt yesterday, but it was hanging up. And I was like, yo, I got shit. Hey, you know you wear that shirt yesterday. Because I'm one track minded, right? I'm right. Just like, yo, we got to go. We got to get it. I got to focus on this, this, this. Certain things in my mind just don't work. That's how a lot of men operate. Like, if you, if you watch Warren Buffett's, uh, his, uh, his becoming Warren Buffett, it shocked me to, to realize that his wife said, she was like, yo, he really doesn't know how to play in water. Like, his mind only works in one direction, and it's investing, and it's, it's acquiring companies. He don't know nothing about cooking nothing. Wow, right? wow. So, and, I, and I'm like, yo, but this dude is a genius. She said she got sick one day, and she asked him to bring him, bring her a pot because, you know, she couldn't get up and go to the bathroom. And he, she said, bring me the round uh, bowl thing, the one that has a bottom on it. said that he, he brought her a strainer with, uh, with a sheet pan on the bottom of it. Right, that shit had me rolling, but it's just wow. like, you know, it's, yeah, the, the, you know, the third, fourth richest man in the world, like, his, our minds are, especially men that are focused on business effort. Now, you have some guys that are exceptional, like, you know, the guys with, like, at, like I mean, I don't want to say, like, I'm a fan, but I do it all, right? I, I cook, I clean, I do laundry, I run my bill, also, like, we, I'm like, we do all that, and then on top of it, like, I enjoy cooking for my women, and, you know, this stuff, like, you know, all that stuff, right? But some dudes don't work like that. The no, job. Robert, it's not some dudes, honey. That's like 98% of men don't work like you. Like, let me repeat. You just said, I do the laundry, I cook, like, um, I do, you do everything, Robert. <laughs> like, you're so self-sufficient. So, I think we're going to wrap this up soon. So you're so self-sufficient, Robert. Like you, you're a boss, you know, you, you make plenty of money. You're a great guy. How does a woman fit into your life? Because you are the high value man. Like you're well-dressed, you're articulate, you're sweet, you're kind, you're charming, you're everything a woman could ever want. So how does a woman fit into your life? Yo, let me tell you something. My and it's, it's way more simple than you think, right? So when I put down, I have to put down on paper, like what your characteristics are that you want in a woman. I said that I wanted a woman that was understanding, that was respectful, and that was grounded, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, I I I enjoy women, and and I look at like the history of the woman that I dated. I like women that have that are motivated to do stuff because, like I said, just like in my business, like I'm the I'm the behind the scenes person, but I know that I'm the one that's pulling the triggers. Like every the last the women that I've dated, they've all gone on to either own their own business or they or they change their circumstances. I met because I enjoy 
pushing my partner to be best. You gotta have somebody that's open minded, right? So somebody right. who has a dream that wants to do something. I'm like, yo, we're gonna make this shit happen, right? So I I look at it as this because of where I am. It's not that I need a woman to that do it because you know I've always I've had always had most of everything taken care of. So you know I'm not necessarily being like yo you know what, what is, I'm saying it just because this is the way my lifestyle is like there's no kids involved and stuff like this. So my bills have been paid. You know my properties are paid. So it's all that stuff's taken care of. But you know now we're, now if you go to with family and stuff like that now you're jumping to a whole different level. So it's just kind of like okay that's where and I'm real. I'm real cautious about stuff like mm-hmm. that. So I would, it, this would be a conversation that we're going to have, like, okay, what type of lifestyle are you going to live? And because not only do you have to live a lifestyle, but you have to maintain it throughout time, not be like, oh, yo, we got to sell the house. So for men like me and then the other guys that I know, because now that I'm actually only around other guys like me, and we talk about the same thing of how crazy we think all the women are today because of what, that what happens is that the, we're in our 30s now, and some of them are in their forties. We are on the back end of that initial torment that you're talking about that women are going through. So the first thing I need a woman to be is healed from the stuff that she's gone through. Because I've, I've tried. I've been in those situations where they you you heard the story, everything they went through, and then you're like, well, they didn't get help for. Oh, it's gonna be okay because I'll show them that. All oh, men they like. Let me tell you something. That is gay. That's a that's a bumpy road to go down, and it don't normally work out for nobody. Right? <laughs> so you, and I'm serious. That's a that's a road I would tell any man: do not sign up for it. I don't care how bad she is. Don't do it. Say, listen, babe. Matter of fact, I was just talking to somebody the other day, and it was a beautiful woman that I'm interested in, and I didn't suggest it. She suggested it. She said. You know, I didn't really never got help after, you know, my divorce. This didn't happen, blah, blah, blah. She was like, I think I'm going to see some micro I was like, the ching I was like, because I was like, <laughs> she is going. And it was, I didn't have to shame them. And I, I, was like, hey, I was like, I support that. I was like, because it's very, very important. So you need somebody that comes whole. Like, everyone, not perfect. Just hold. It says, hey, I know. And have somebody be understanding of their faults and what they're going through and currently working on that. But then have somebody. You, so me personally, I need. I would need somebody that's understanding, understanding my lifestyle. That I'm on the phone a lot when it get when it gets hectic. That I and then what happens is I get stressed out and then my mind drifts and wanders sometimes because you know that's just what we do. Freak out because we're providers. Because I'm like yo, I'm, I'm, in, my, in the man's mind, we're responsible for everything. So that's it's a lot of pressure. And it's not mm-hmm. just me, it's not just me, it's other people. So it's like you, it's dad, blah, blah. So you need somebody that's understanding and then a person that knows how to be like, okay, I'm just going to take a step back right now because I need to give them the space to be able to do this and this and this. And then somebody also that has her own goals and her own dreams because I need you to be living and pursuing a life so we can grow together, not just them sitting back waiting on me because I think that's where a lot of problems come in where a high, a high level man is with a woman who is just kind of like, she's just like a side ornament, which sometimes that works for some people. But mm-hmm. for people like me, I want, I, when we sit down and we talk at dinner, not only do I want to talk about, you know, how beautiful you look and stuff like this. I want to, I want to have a conversation about how everything's going. How's your business going? You know, this and this and that. Like, literally sitting there and like, ne- like ne- never having a dull moment of things not to talk about whether it's personal, whether it's business, whether it's spiritual, you know, we might even step into talking to pop. Somebody, and then also somebody that you can talk to. Like, I, I don't think a lot of people take enough time to become articulate and just become educated just in what's going on in the world to sit out and have coffee over and you, before you know it, you sit out there and talk for an hour, hour and a half. And I believe that also opens up communications to the person saying, hey, you know, how's everything going? You know, and, and I even asked them, I'm like, I was like, yo, am I slacking on something? Because, you know, there's, it, as a, you know, the way I operate, you mm-hmm. know, I was just thinking about the day, like, yo, like, I think the last time I had sex was like two weeks ago, right? So it's just mm-hmm. kind of like, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm like, damn, you know, now I'm thinking about it now. I'm like, okay, I got to go do something about that, you know, with the individual because it's like, you know, like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? But, not, but I mean, it's only now that I'm, I'm addressing this and talking about it, but because I just got back from Columbia, I've been running nonstop, stepping back, waking up, working out, like I'm exhausted and, and stuff like that. So I'm just like, oh shit, I'm falling short in this area. I need to make sure that she's cool. So this is where communication starts coming in and be like, hey, baby, is everything cool? 
you know, am I, am I, you know, am, you know, am I handling my business? Is everything right. okay? And then be okay with the, the one with the aunt. She's like, well, you know, you said, you know, we don't talk about you know, you know, I'm feeling a certain type of way. Like, Yo, like this, per- I think that's crucial and you have to have that communication. Right. And, but the, that communication, as far as saying, hey, I'm not complaining, so I'm just letting you know because you're a, a woman's feelings are just as valid as a man's feelings and their wants and needs. And if a woman, like for me, like you, there's that book, uh, Love with uh, I forgot what it is, the seven love languages or whatever it is. But when you understand what your love language is, your partner, a part of uh, signing up to deal with you, he takes on that role of saying, okay, I understand this is what you need. And mine is, uh, you know, uh, terms of endearment and stuff like that. So I, I, ne- I personally never need a woman to buy me anything, but but them checking up on me in the middle of the day, or if I'm stressed out and I just get a message from them and say, hey, baby, I'm just thinking about you. You know, I know you're out there killing me, you know, keep your head going. I had that happen the other day. Like, I was just like, yo, this, I'm dealing with some bullshit, and blah, 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 and I got a message like that. And I think that right there is worth, you know, $10,000 for me because it's like gas for my for my race car. So that's one that's one of the things so when you get when you start getting to i would say guys like myself and i i appreciate everything you said you know we're still just works in progress but we're just i'm just we're just me and the guys that i work with we're just you know young hard-working men and we're actually focused on everything proper so we're not out there doing ratchet shit no more because we, we get our our, our good <laughs> our good amount of ratchet stuff but we're just focused so then wow robert what we are running out of time. Like this has okay, been, okay. this has been such a great conversation. You have dropped so many gems for women. Like women, okay. you've dropped so I many gems. It's going to change a lot of women. So women, you ladies, you see what's going on on this show. You have to tune in with Robert and I every single week for this podcast. You're going to learn a lot of things and you're going to learn to have beautiful relationships. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you, Robert. Um, this is really, really great. So I will talk to you next week. All righty, let's do it. Bye.